The, the, a slump is how much your concrete sinks or settles during uh, its curing process. We want a very dry mix. We want no slump whatsoever because we're forcing our concrete through a precast form which is attached to our curving machine and we want it to stay in that form once it's extruded through the machine. If we had a wet mix, it would slump. Uh, the curb it's, would virtually fall apart and like I had mentioned before, you'd be fighting mud all day and it's just not worth your time. Fantastic, JR. We're going to let JR get started to mix. We've already prepped our job site, so here you go. We're ready to start installing landscape curbing. This particular landscape application that we're doing today is on a slant curb and it's going to be colored. We're using brown. The particular recipe for the brown, desired brown is one pound per batch. So I just have one of these cooking uh, measuring cups that I measure my color in. I've got one pound of brown powder that comes in five pound sacks and I'm going to put this into my mix first so it gets evenly distributed throughout the entire mix. The next thing that I put into the mix is X Factor. That's that chemical additive that does all sorts of things that I told you about. We put in 16 ounces per batch. And that's all the chemical additive that you need for that. Fiber mesh, all you need is a pinch full. This is in fact probably plenty. If you put in too much, you're gonna end up with what looks like a hairy curb when you're all done. So be very careful not to overdo it. What you ultimately want when you're done with your mix is to be able to hand pack a ball of cement. Roll it around in your hand and you don't want it to come apart or go flat. That's what we mean by no slump. If it comes apart, there's not enough moisture yet in the cement. So you're looking for just the right amount mixture, right amount of water to maintain a ball of cement with no slump and no breaking apart. I like to, while this is mixing, get ready for my next batch. Looks like we've got our concrete sticking together. No slump, we're ready to curve. Today we're running a two-man curbing crew, two-person curbing crew for that matter. What I like to do before we take our mud back to the mixer is get the next batch ready. You don't want to leave concrete inside your mixer without moisture, otherwise it'll be hardening up and impossible to clean. So we're going to get the next batch going. We have the CLS 650X is what we've been using for our concrete curbing machine. It means that we require access to power from our homeowners and it's very easy to use. You just plug it in and go. I'm going to be shoveling some, the, our cement mixture into the hopper here. The engine has got, drives a ram that is going to be mechanically extruding the curb through our precast form. And you'll see it as we start curbing that we're using a slant style curb. We have a two inch profile facing the law and a four inch back for holding in edging materials or bedding materials. We're then going to stamp the face of the curb.
using the electrical machine, we have found that per batch, we get an average of 20 to 25 feet. It takes us a total of three to five minutes, depending on the topography and curvature, to extrude an entire batch. As you can see here, through working through tight turns, you're going to get cracking. And the reason is, is because no matter how good a mix you have, no matter how well you prepped your job, you're still making a turn with an 18 inch long solid steel straight form. So when you're making your turns, you're going to get what's called heaves, where the curb is pushing against itself, it's going to break apart. The way you fix that is in your finishing processes with a hand trowel. But we'll come back here momentarily and you'll see how good it can look. As you can see, we have Forrest Hanna with my crew here in Central Oregon Curb Appeal doing our finish work for us with the trowel. He is very good at it. What he does is while he's pushing forward, he's lifting up on the front end of the trowel, and when he's pulling backwards against the curb, he's lifting up on the back end of the trowel. This is to prevent digging the edge of the trowel into your curb, hence just damaging it. You can see what a smooth finish he's getting. All of the cracks that you'll see in the curb will get instantly troweled out with a good mix. What you'll see Forrest doing now while he's working the corner is though it looks like he's pounding, which in fact he is, he's actually taking really small trowel strokes each time that he's slamming it down there helping smooth out that rounded corner. Yeah. Curb Appeal USA and Curb Appeal International manufactures a stamp kit that has eight rollers and three hand stamps, giving you nearly a dozen different stamps that you could utilize to apply to any one of your curbing installations. They all come with a handle when you're applying the rollers. I've kind of found that it's best for me anyway to leave the handle in the box and I like to apply the roller by hand. These are already pretty hefty so it doesn't take a great deal of pressure when you're applying them. I simply just lay it on the curb with a small amount of hand pressure, roll my stamp forward and you can see the impression that it's going to leave inside of the curb.